A spaceship is sailing through the vastness of the universe. The astronauts in the ship are preparing to enter the hibernation chamber. They're sailing from Earth to a distant planet to do research. The trip will take 40 years, but because they're in hibernation base, it will take less than a year for the astronauts because of the length of the voyage. Astronaut Nancy took her pet cat, Lily, with her. Everyone is anxious about hibernation, and no one can imagine what it will be like to return to Earth after 40 years. Hibernation has officially begun. The cabin is quiet, and the spaceships sail quietly in the universe. After an unknown amount of time, the computer in the ship's main control room suddenly lit up and an emergency call appeared on the screen. A few days later, a message appeared on the screen that an unidentified object was approaching the ship. The computer automatically deployed a command to intercept the object, and it was thrown into the ship. The object was thrown into the cabin, but it accidentally flew into the exhaust ducts and ended up in the water system. The unidentified object gradually decomposed in the water supply and eventually disappeared. This is just a small incident during the ship's voyage, and the astronauts know nothing about it. Time passed, and after 20 years, the astronauts awoke from their hibernation. The first thing Nancy does when she wakes up is to check on Lily, but Lily isn't in the hibernation den. Just then Lily walks in through the door. It turns out that she had woken up a long time ago, and had already made her rounds in the ship. The captain's assistant, Gert, was checking the computer when he found the emergency call which came from the third month of the ship's voyage. 20 years ago, sent by one of the airline's directors, he claimed that two miscreants had infiltrated the astronauts, and just as he was about to send the identifying information of the two men, the computer suddenly dropped the connection. Some speculate that the miscreants must have awakened early, discovered the message, and deleted the rest of it. So why didn't the crowd realize who the miscreants were? It turns out that these astronauts are from all over the world and this voyage is the first time they've met each other. Then why did the outlaws choose to make their exodus in this way? The answer is simple. This mission will take 40 years, but for the dormant astronauts, it's only one year of life. At that point, who on earth would care about the 40-year-old fugitives? A proposal was made to imprison them, but the captain refused. Because for all of them, being in the universe, they were already prisoners. But then the temperature in the fourth sector of the ship suddenly plummeted. The captain sends Diluto, Morgan, and Takagi to fix it. At lunchtime, a crew member tells the captain that someone seems to have taken control of the computers during the hibernation period, which makes everyone feel something is wrong, and an ominous feeling comes into everyone's head. After lunch, Morgan was walking alone in the cabin when a strange noise suddenly came from the distance. Shortly afterward, two more astronauts arrived at the cabin. Suddenly, two screams spread throughout the ship. The others immediately followed the sound and rushed over, only to see Morgan collapsed on the ground. His expression full of horror, unnoticed by everyone at the moment. On the plywood above the cabin, Lily was watching with glowing eyes. Doctors examined Morgan and found that he was infected with a virus called mycobacteriosis. This bacterium is able to multiply in the lungs, eventually causing the patient to suffocate and die. The captain is puzzled. As the ship has already been sterilized, the doctor explains that the virus did not come from Earth. The captain orders an investigation of the entire ship. The doctor was analyzing the virus when Lily arrived. The doctor offered her a friendly hand. Soon after, the crew found the doctor dead in his office. The cause of death was the same. It seems to the captain that the source of the virus is linked to the infiltration of the outlaws. He began questioning the ship's crew, but some of them were not happy. They feel their privacy has been violated. Just then, engineer Caroline asks the captain to go to the control room. The captain rushes to the control room, but to his surprise, he can't see on the monitors that two more astronauts have had accidents. The captain decides to continue his questioning of the crew. Nancy can't find Lily again. Takagi joins her in the search. At that moment, Lily walks in front of Nancy. Nancy followed her, but there was nothing there. The captain questioned everyone. But Takagi interrupted them. He tells everyone to follow him to the infirmary to check things out. It turns out that the dead astronauts had been placed here. And now, shockingly, their bodies have disappeared, leaving only their clothes in their place. Just as the crowd was wondering, Nancy's screams came from the cabin. The crowd rushed over to check, only to see that Nancy was banging on a cabin door, which was now stained red with blood. And Lily surprisingly appeared on top of it, looking as if it was being swallowed by the door. Lily hissed in pain 
until she was completely engulfed by the door. Takagi goes up to check it out, and the entire door seems to be corroded. However, Diluto says that the gate is made of special materials, and won't be subjected to any aggression. The other astronauts are reminded of the bacteria of the plague, and perhaps that bacteria is the culprit. In order to get rid of the bacteria, the captain ordered the infirmary to be separated from the ship and abandoned in the middle of the universe. The crew breathes a sigh of relief, but is the crisis really over? Researcher Dick proposes to continue the investigation, and just then, investigator Dorothy sneaks into the treatment room. She uses a scanner to examine her body, and the results show that she is in perfect health. Just as Dorothy was breathing a sigh of relief, a pair of tentacles suddenly attacked her. Dick had already questioned everyone, but found nothing. Caroline was still checking the computer. Suddenly, she realized that the computer had somehow lost control. That's bad news. Diludo and the other astronaut are on a mission in the cabin, and the captain orders them to evacuate. But it's too late. The door to the cabin suddenly opens, and they're sucked into the cosmic abyss. A computer screen suddenly lit up, showing that the second area had been cleared of the source of the infection, and that they were about to begin the cleanup of the fifth area and it appeared that the computers had begun to automate the process of disposing of the infected individuals among the astronauts. Dorothy isn't around, so they are suspicious of her. Takagi suggests that they look in the treatment room, and they find Dorothy's clothes there. They suspect Takagi again. Takagi explains that he also came here secretly, because he suspected that he was infected with mycobacteriosis. And it was just as he thought. Takagi then told them the story of how the disease came about. Years ago, a hotel hosted a party, and after a while, the people at the party began to die of respiratory arrest, just like the people on the airship who contracted the disease. How did the people get the virus? Because of the bacteria that had colonized the hotel's air conditioning system, which had entered the room through the ventilation ducts and was eventually inhaled by the people. Takaki hypothesized that the fourth area of the ship had been damaged and that was probably where the bacteria had multiplied. But there's another question, where are the remains of the dead? Takagi doesn't know. At that moment, Dick questioned Takagi. According to the data, Takagi was a space technician, but not a medical expert, so he questioned Takagi's identity. Takagi laughed when he heard that the identities of the two criminals were finally revealed. One was Takagi and the other was Dick. Takagi is a murderer who came to the ship to escape his sentence while Dick is a detective who came here to find the murderer. The captain, after hearing what happened, advises Dick to let Takaki go for now, as the most important thing is to solve the crisis on the ship. Dick, however, handcuffs himself to Takaki, saying that at this point both are still normal people, so he must fulfill his duty of catching criminals. The captain thinks Dick is being a bit too childish, which makes Dick laugh when he hears it. The captain was obviously about his age, but the captain explained that he was already 230 years old and had been on many missions like this one. The others were amazed and couldn't imagine what it would be like to come back to Earth and see his friends and family dying and his children even older than he was. Nancy's mood was a little apprehensive at this time. She wanted to go back to her room to rest unintentionally. She was surprised to see Dorothy's figure in the corner and Lily's figure also surfaced. Nancy couldn't help but scream, and the others rushed to check it out. A huge tentacled monster stood there where the figure had appeared. Dick quickly raised his rifle to shoot, but because he was in the middle of space, he was hit by the recoil of the rifle and flew out, seriously injured. On the other side, the computer calculated the infected area of the ship and found that 70% of the area had been infected. Who knows what the computer will do next? The captain divided the crowd into two teams. He led the men to find weapons to attack the monsters. Nancy took Deke with her to treat his injuries. Nancy is puzzled about Takaki because she doesn't think he's a murderer. Takaki explains to her that his sister was hurt by someone and that's why he killed his enemy. Deke interjects that Takaki shouldn't have acted on his own and that this kind of thing could have been left to the police. But Takaki says he doesn't regret what he did in the first place. The captain goes on a tour of the ship with a flamethrower, and he spots Lily in the control room. Suddenly, Lily rushes toward the captain, who opens fire on her. But surprisingly, Lily is not dead. And even more surprisingly, Lily is a robot, and it quickly escapes. The captain checked the computer's map of the infected area and asked the computer what to do. Instead of replying, the computer said that only the main disk could communicate with it. The captain rushed to ask the identity of the master disk. The computer replied, the master disk is a bionic robot, 
Its name is Lily. Most of the ship has been corroded, so the captain leads the group to escape. While walking through a corrupted corridor, they suddenly heard a strange sound. Suddenly, countless tentacles attacked them, and then a black monster appeared in front of them, and the whole corridor was filled with monsters. The captain escaped from the corridor and talked about what happened to Lily. He deduced that it was the company that didn't trust the people to carry out the mission. So they sent a robot undercover. That is, the robot cat that looks exactly like Lily. But unexpectedly, its body accidentally contracted a disease. And the whole spaceship was in trouble. At that moment, Dick suddenly had an accident. He was also infected with a virus. He directly transformed into countless threads of silk which flew out a lawless lid. It seems that the monster was gathered from this. There are three people left on the ship. Suddenly, the ship shook. The captain realizes that this is Lily controlling the computer, performing the final cleanup, and all three will die soon. Takaki comes up with a bold idea. He thinks it would be better to kill himself, rather than be killed by the monsters and the computer. At the critical moment, he is stopped by the captain, who says that he still has a private airship, and leads Takagi and Nancy to that airship's parking spot. And the captain then leaves alone. He tells the other to that the captain should live and die with the ship. With that, Takagi and Nancy leave in the private ship, while the captain activates the ship's self-destruct mechanism. With a quiet explosion, the story comes to a close.